Thank you. Oh, thank you. They've completely separated. Oh Look at him. He is such a great actor. It's inside his head. It's inside his head. No, it's it not. It killed the driver. It killed... It... It's using... Him. Wants us. He said so. He's waited so long. He's waited so long. In the dark. In the dark. And the cold. Look at... It's still in her, but she's using him. Until you came. Until she you came. wants... So hot. Them to throw him out. It can't be because I saw it pass into him. I saw it with my own eyes. So did I. You didn't. It went from her to him. You saw it, didn't you? Didn't you? Just making it up. I know what I saw. I saw her stealing his voice. She's as bad as him. Someone. Look at them. Hydraulics and hydraulics when I can tell you you are nothing more than average at best. Now shut up. Yeah, we should throw him out. Don't just talk about it, just do useless, do something! Gonna, you watch me, I'm gonna... Oh my god, look at him. Throw him out! Throw him out! Get rid of him! Get rid No, that's what she wants! Don't! He'll be you next! Don't think we should do this! Do it right there! Don't you dare! Don't you dare! Come on! Throw him out! Come on! Just do it! Oh God! Why didn't Donna come with him? Can someone please do something? Please, no. Yes. Come on, please say something. Stand. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. She's taken his <laughs> She is sacrificing herself. She really, she died for him. Yeah, and all of you just not a single one of the people who thought it was wrong did do something. Just that one woman. The others were just standing around. I said it was and her. You shut up. I don't want to listen to your voice anymore. Can't stand you, Miss Whoever, whatever your name is. The hostess. What was her name? Nobody knows. I don't. I never remember names. That's so beautiful. Oh my god, Donna, the next time you leave him alone. You can't leave that man alone. Oh my god, she did she just needed to look at him. I can't imagine you without a voice. Molto bene. Molto bene. She says it way better. Done. Yeah. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I understand. She said it better anyways. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. You guys. I don't know about you. But I think that was one of the best episodes of Doctor Who that I have ever seen. 
this episode, hands down, it it's just... I don't even have words to describe what I'm feeling right now. I don't know if you have noticed, but my eyes actually teared up during the episode. At one point during the episode, when the monster started to talk for the doctor, because of how happy I was with watching such a masterpiece of an episode. This is just, that episode made me so happy. I did, I did, I actually, I can't like grasp what exactly it was, but it felt, first of all, it felt like it, I was watching a theater. It didn't feel like a TV episode in the best way possible. Because if you're watching a theater with many people on the stage, like a little group on the stage, and each and every single one has its own character, and they were, for the short time of the episode, all of those characters were portrayed so good. Each and every single person had their individual strength and their character traits. And they, I don't know how they did that to manage that in this little time span, but they portrayed every single person so well. Everything took place in just this little, in, I think that was the tiniest spice ever that we had for any Doctor Who episode. It was how much, like maybe, I, I'm, I'm bad with this stuff. 10 square meters, maybe? Like I said, I'm not good with that. But it was such a tiny space. All of the people in this one space, all episode long, they didn't change place. I mean, at the start and at the end, there was Donna in the spa, but that didn't really matter to the episode itself. Everything took place in that little train, in that one compartment of the train. The monster wasn't I, I mean it was alien it was supernatural but we didn't see any aliens there was no chance for the makeup people to create a monster that maybe looks so not good <laughs> that it maybe disturbs the episode in one way or another I mean, we already have seen certain episodes, for example, like the alien episodes of the first series. I mean, those didn't look very bad, actually. But you know, there are episodes where you would actually have a very good story, and then you see the alien and think like, okay, well, I don't know, that looks pretty bad, N not well made, or it doesn't fit into the episode, into the story. But this didn't happen here, because we had a human, there was the alien inside of it. And the other thing is we don't know what it was. It was so mysterious. We don't know how it looks. We don't know what it is. We don't know what it wants. We know nothing about it. All we know is that it can get into the head of certain people and it can use them like figurines on a chessboard and the fact that the alien looked like a human being made it so much more horrifying and they picked a great actress i mean all of those actors were phenomenal each and every single one of them just on point on point acting but the woman that did this, the woman that was the alien, wow, just wow. Is this actress very, like, is she known in the UK? Is she, like, famous? Or is she just some actress? I don't know her. I have never seen her, I think. But she played that so well. The scene where I mentioned where she was talking simultaneously with the doctor. And they were so close to each other, like face to face. And they knew the words they had to say. I mean, that's an actor's job. But to say it exactly in the same second than the other actor, actress does. 
and not only to say it in the very same second, but also to say it in the way that you have to say it, in terms of the intonation, in terms of the pronunciation. Like, you, the actress had to copy the exact words and melodies of the words, like how the other actors and actresses said those words. And especially when she was talking with the doctor. They went back and forth so fast and everything was just perfect. It was just perfect. Like I said, I really wanted to see like a behind the scenes of this exact episode because I do have a feeling I would burst in laughter if I had to shoot a scene like that and stay serious <laughs> and have to be fast. Oh no, wait a minute. Okay. What you just saw was my OBS breakdown and refuse to um, continue recording. Yay! I was so afraid that the reaction and the or the audio from the episode or my audio from the microphone would be lost. <laughs> I just panicked so hard. You cannot imagine. And then I was looking for the reason why it did that and it said that there was not enough space anymore on the hard drive. Only 48 megabyte were left. So I started deleting files that I didn't need anymore of episodes, for example, that are already up on YouTube and I deleted them and deleted them and deleted them. But it always showed 48 megabytes and I actually thought that my computer is broken. <laughs> oh my god, I was so afraid. I transferred other folders from my computer to my other... I do have a, like an external file over here, but it takes so much time because it's a very old one. <laughs> and it like took 30 minutes to remove 12 gigabyte or something. I was waiting for so long, but it only said 48 megabyte, <laughs> even after removing files, deleting files and everything. I was completely freaked because I don't have money for a new computer at the moment. I just don't. Until... <laughs> this is so stupid. Until I saw that every folder that I deleted was just put into the bin on the computer but it was not removed at all so i emptied the bin and there were like 19 gigabytes that were freed oh my gosh okay so this means that now i do have time to record other stuff and then i do really need to transfer those torchwood episodes onto my external drive because otherwise this won't work any longer because one reaction like filming one reaction takes up from like around six to eight gigabyte depends on the length of it so that wouldn't last very long 19. but back to the episode um i was talking about how i couldn't film such a scene because of the back and forth and the fast conversation that they had face to face without laughing and just concentrating on pronunciating the words just like the other person did phenomenal just phenomenal gosh i'm so hyped about this episode you guys you, you have no idea this is actually one of the best if not the best doctor who episode that i have ever seen in my life, <laughs> in my short reaction life. So, reasons for that, I already talked about many of them. Theater style, really small room in which all of this took place. And do you know, there is one thing that you have to think about. If you film an episode or even a movie in such a small space, there are even movies that do have less space than this Doctor Who episode. For example, there is that one movie where a guy gets buried underground in a casket and he's just lying in this casket and the whole movie is just him lying in this casket. 
he's ha he has a phone and he talks to people but do you know how good of a story you have to write if you have this limited space and this limited like actors and actresses to perform your story you need to come up with something really good and whoever wrote that episode he's just a genius i i love him i love her i don't know who wrote that episode i didn't watch it's just a genius in my eyes because the writing of the episode was so phenomenally done having uh, an actual actress play the threat the only threat in the episode and just by looking and by talking creating this atmosphere of total disaster of total horror of uneasiness and i think that really worked very well too because they were in such a close space they couldn't run anywhere they couldn't hide they were just caught in this one train with the evil with no way to run anywhere but apart from the evil stuff also the dialogues between the people were so well written they were really believable they weren't like out of the ordinary each person was so relatable even if some of them like really cracked me off oh my god that one woman <sighs> that Karen <laughs> she was the worst and in the end I caught myself being really rude to her because she was driving me nuts she was like constantly screaming constantly complaining but she didn't never never ever do something to help with the situation she just complained all the time very loudly it was so annoying but in a good way <laughs> because it was really good for the episode also the son of him who was switching between opinions <laughs> he just didn't know what he wanted one time it was on his parents side the other time he was the opposite side and when they th wanted to throw out the doctor he was like really thinking about he didn't want that but he didn't do anything to prevent it either. The professor and um, the other woman who was with the professor, she was so cute. She was really cute. I liked her so much. And the professor was so rude to her at the end. Also, the state of panic brings out the worst in human beings. And I say this as if I wasn't one of them. <laughs> But it really, I mean, you can't help it, right? If you're in a situation of panic, your brain just switches to this state where it's just fight or flight response. You're not thinking logically anymore. I mean, there are some people who like succeed with trying to think at least a little bit or trying to use their brain for something else than just fight or flight. But that's very, very rare. You can't even be angry at those people. But in a situation where there is panic, it just doesn't help to create even more panic. It's just like that. It doesn't work out. You never get any problem solved if you're panicking. Yeah, it was so well done. Also, the back and forth between the different people when they were like talking about the evil person in the room and what they should do with the person, how they fell, how some of them fell for the evil person when she or when it changed. I mean, it didn't really change the people because it was still in her, inside of her, but it used the doctor because the people were debating whether to throw her out of the train or the doctor or both of them. And she just wanted them to throw out the doctor. She, so she was like using him and pretending to be inside him. So they tried to... and. In the end, she succeeded because most of the people inside the train fell for it. Most of the people. And others didn't fall for it, but didn't do anything about it either. So, 
Yeah, well, there was only that one person in the end. I could go on talking about this story forever and ever and ever because it was just wonderful. It was just nothing that I could compare it to. It felt like a Stephen King movie on a theater stage. That's how it felt. The tensity was there from start to finish. The characters were well done. The story was well written. The threat was... So, I mean, think about this. The, the, the special thing about the threat was that it wasn't action heavy. It wasn't a monster that was walking through the train trying to kill people, trying to fight people. It was a person sitting on the ground, talking. Like, what should you be afraid of, right? Just a woman on the floor talking back to you. I mean, she's repeating everything you say, <laughs> but it's just the threat was on a psychological level. It was all in your brain. Because if you kept your cool, for example, I mean, you could stay in, in this train for an hour until the rescue team arrives, just not talking to the woman. She couldn't have done anything. She didn't have the power to like touch people or kill people. All of her power lied on a psychological level. So she, you, if you kept your cool, she wouldn't be a, a threat at all. She could just sit there and even if she talked back to you. So what? You don't have to fall for it. Just ignore her until the rescue team arrives or choose not to talk at all. So that was the thing. The more the people talked, the more the people thought she was a threat the more they made her a threat in the first place. She got into their heads. And I love that. I love that. It's not obvious on the nose horror. It's the horror that goes on in your mind. <sighs> you guys, you guys, it's just wow. And also, just real quick before we go into the rating, I saw her. I saw Rose in that one scene. So now in this series we're using like screens to show her every now and then, are we? <laughs> yeah, I guess we are. I guess now we're gonna go into the IMBD rating because I'm afraid that my computer will leave me again. Although it says it says you still have time to record 1657 hours and 46 minutes. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of reactions, but I don't know if this is accurate. So let's better go to the IMBD rating. We already have two parts <laughs> for this reaction that I have to cut together. <laughs> okay, here we are. And what can I say? I am so curious. I have never been as curious as I am now for this rating of the episode because for me like i said top 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 tier a plus 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 if it was for me this episode would be a 15. realistic rating my realistic rating because i know a 15 is not possible 9.9 9. I'm sorry. This is just the best that I have. I, I just loved it from start to finish. There is nothing bad that I could say about the episode other than that Karen really annoyed me. <laughs> That's the only thing. But this is not even a bad thing for the episode. She just was needed as a character in there to, to drive all of us crazy and to, to forward the story. 9.9. .9. What else can I say? I just don't give a 10 because there are so many series left and I have to have a little, at least a little, a really small range. But this, wow, 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 wow.
This is just the best episode. This is just the best episode. Okay. And now I'm so curious if this is only me, because I do have the feeling it might only be me. I don't know. Oh my god. I really don't know. And I'm so curious if this now all only has a six point something. I'm gonna I'm gonna visit each and every single person that rated. And I'm gonna have a talk with them and repeat every single word they say back to me. <laughs> okay. Poison Sky. Doctor's daughter, unicorn. Oh my god, I'm so, I'm so, my heart is beating so fast right now. Silence in the library, forest of the dead. Please give this episode what it, it really deserves a lot more than 9.4. Midnight. Are you serious? Are you serious? The rating is worse than La silence in the library and forest of the dead. <sighs> yeah. So. I think I'm gonna have to travel to certain places in the future and visit 805, 800, 8,599 people <laughs> and tell them what I think of their rating. No, no. I mean, it's a good rating, but it's not close to what it should be. So now I'm even more curious about all of your ratings out there. Are you on the side of IMBD or are you on my side? You better be on my side. <laughs> please, please tell me in the comments what you think about this episode. For me, it's just a masterpiece without any discussion. I think I'm just gonna go and rewatch it. No, I can't today, but tomorrow I'm gonna rewatch it. Oh, and the part, that's one thing, one last thing that I want to say. And the part where David played, where like um, the evil thing used the doctor to talk for him. And David, oh my God, give this man an Oscar for this particular scene. When he was sitting there repeating what the bad thing said, tears were running down his eyes. His his look when the camera focused on David, it was such. I don't know how he did that. On the one hand, he just was staring into the abyss. There was still life in his eyes, in terms of sadness and in terms of desperation. You could feel it through the screen. In that scene it was such a strong feeling although the the, the bad em entity took away the person that's supposed to be inside him it took away the doctor it seemed like an empty container but in his eyes you still you could still see the doctor in the the whole face was like dead but in his eyes you could still see him fighting, the sadness, the desperation, it was all there. It, it was so well done and it brought tears to my eyes seeing him like that. I mean, he is a really good actor. He's such a good actor. But that was the best he ever did. Like the, the cherry on top. Of the doctor cake. Just those are my last words for this episode. It was just the best episode that I have ever seen of Doctor Who, hands down. I guess this is taking the first place. I really have to rethink or think about this statement because I do not want to do something stupid right now and throw an episode out of there, of the top tier, and just putting this up there. But I guess I'm gonna think about this, and I'm gonna talk about it. I will actually talk about it in my series four review, and then all of you will know where I rate this episode. But it's way up high there. There. Okay. 
And I'm going to leave you. I'm happy. I'm so happy I watched that episode. I hope each and every single one of you out there had as much fun watching this reaction with me as I did watching this phenomenal masterpiece of an episode. And I see each and every single one of you next week. Until then. Bye.